Shimano and City are big players in the XC shoe world. So when they both released new models for 2017, I thought it'd be a great chance for a head-to-head -head test. Both shoes sit at the absolute top of their respective ranges and they have an equally expensive price tag to match. With that in mind, I wanted to put some serious hours of training and racing in before I gave a final verdict. I'm gonna start with the City Tiger. Now the City Tiger is more of a reworking than a kind of whole new shoe. Their old shoe that this has superseded is the Draco and it's fairly similar, but there are obviously some differences. The sole and fit have remained virtually unchanged, so you're gonna get a full carbon sole. It's obviously totally unyielding, you know, there's no, you're not losing any watts through the pedals with these shoes. Fit is fairly narrow. Cities have got a reputation for a yeah, fairly narrow fit, and this is definitely on the narrow side. So if you're normally comfortable with a city, this is no different. Just like the Draco, there's no arch support built into the Tiger shoe. That being said, with cities, what you do get is quite a nice sculpt on the carbon last. So even though there's no arch support in the shoe, the kind of actual sculpt of the carbon gives a fairly good support for your the arch of your foot. The upper is where the big change has been made. The most obvious is that they've moved the retention dials from the side where they were on the Draco to the top where they now are on the Tiger. There's two good reasons for this. The first is fit. Hopefully it's going to give a more even pressure all across the top of the foot because it's not being pulled across. It's kind of pinching in the middle. And the second one which I came to appreciate was that the buckles are more protective in the event of a crash or something like that. With the old Dracos, when the buckles ran down the side, I managed to crash on the road, scrape the buckles along the road and one of them broke and needed replacing. With these, you might be able to tell I've already crashed just here, but the buckles out of the way, so they remained undamaged. Finally, they're a touch lighter than the Dracos. My size 45, weighed 409 grams, and that's with Shimano cleats. But the features which are classic City is that the tread on the sole, here, 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 is all replaceable. That's a really good thing because shoes like this, they're crazy expensive, and a lot of shoes now come with soles that aren't replaceable. And once you wear that out, the shoe's done. So it's really nice to see. The one disadvantage to this is that they've got no rubber or kind of protection on the midsole here and if you've ever been riding down a descent or accelerating you slip a pedal and you hit that carbon midsole it's like ice and it just slips off like that that being said a quick workaround i've often done is just stick a bit of bar tape down there and that kind of solves the issue once out and riding i got on really well with the tigers the heel cup is really good at locking your heel in. There's actually a couple of screws just there, which you can adjust to, to kind of clamp your heel even more. But I found, I found that there's just virtually no heel slippage with them at all. As I've already said, the carbon sole is as stiff as you ever need, but you know, every high-end shoe has a stiff carbon sole now, so it's, it's just kind of a given. The retention system felt a bit more comfortable than the old Draco because it's got a nice padded tongue now and a more um, even fit. They're a bit tougher to get on, but you know, it's easier than laces, so it's, it's not so bad. One place I found where I didn't get on with them quite as well was if you're doing any walking or hike a bike or anything like that. As you can see from the lugs on the sole, they're fairly minimal and they're fairly narrow and tall. So when you walk on them, you kind of, you really feel like your foot's rocking like that. I think if you're a cyclocross rider, I would avoid these shoes because it really felt to me like you could easily roll your ankle on a dismount or something like that. One final plus point for the cities is that they're built like tanks. I've had a few crashes in them, plenty of knocks, and the ruppers remained intact and I've had no issues there. Now onto Shimano's striking but terribly named SH XC9 S Fire shoes. The s are a big change from Shimano's previous top tier XC footwear. They've gone from a buckle and velcro retention system to a boa dial retention system and the sole's been completely reworked as well. Compared to the Cities, the s fit, they fit a bit wider in the toe box and they just come a little bit larger. If you find a city shoe really tight, you might want to size down half a size with a Shimano. But as ever, I'd just recommend trying them on in the shops before you buy. The carbon last on the sole is a lot flatter than the Tiger. 
That being said, the insoles, you get various different arch supports, so you can adjust that. I run the highest arch support and it felt really good for my feet. Compared to the Cities, the heel cup is equally solid. It's got some cat tongue fibre just there. And again, I had no heel slippage when I was riding or walking in them. Onto the bow retention system. Bows have been around for a long time. They work, simple as that. Once I clamped these down, there was a comfortable, even feel across my feet and there was no movement there. Comparing the two, it's hard to think of a winner. They're, they're just subtly different. I found with the Cities, the clicks on the retention system were much larger. So it's possibly harder to really dial in your fit. That being said, I could get a bit more secure with the Cities. With the Shimano's, the clicks are finer, so you can dial in the fit more, and it gave me a more comfortable fit, I'd say. It was a bit more smoother across the top of your foot. Onto the sole. The good stuff. Shimano have teamed up with tyre giant Michelin to create a nice, grippy rubber. I've ridden a lot of Fancy XC shoes, and these are, without doubt, the best to walk in. The rubber's nice and soft, and it gives you a really good, smooth feel. Obviously, most of the time, you're gonna be riding in them, so that doesn't matter. But if you're a cyclocross racer or a marathon racer and you have some hiker bike sections or you've got to run in them or you just commute in them and you go into the office, really nice to walk in. They've also got the rubber protector on the midsole, which the Tigers don't have. Again, this is really good for if you just slip a pedal on the descent, that grips on your pedal and you don't feel like you're going to slide off. They did have some studs just there, but I use these shoes on some really nasty hiker bike sections when I did a big ride in Wales and it just has ripped off the rubber. The screws are still in there, so you could unscrew those and put some fresh studs in. So yeah, it sounds like this is a really good sole and it almost is apart from one problem. As you can see, it's really nice to walk in, but the tread is incredibly low profile, especially at the heel. What I've found is that when I've been walking in these is that the black rubber has started to wear and I've started to dig into the blue plastic on the heel cup. Now, this is a kind of structural part of the shoe and a part I don't think you should be wearing out. Again, these are insanely expensive shoes. If you use them every day, you are commuting in them, riding in them, doing all those things, I'd be worried that they're gonna wear out too quickly on that heel cup because the tread is just too low. I guess what I'd really like to see is just a bit higher tread on the heel, then I think you'd solve that problem. Other places where the s impressed, the stack height is a touch lower than the Tigers, so it gave a slightly nicer pedaling feel. They're also a tiny bit lighter, coming in at 401 grams for a size 45 with Shimano cleats. It's a tiny amount, but every little counts. Just like the Tigers, I've had a couple of crashes in the s and I'd say, while the upper's tough, it hasn't quite held up as well as the Tigers. There's a couple of small rips and nicks in the upper, and I think if you manage to crash them really badly on either a tarmac section or some rocks or just gnarly trail, you could, you could do some real damage to the shoes. And again, expensive shoes, so you don't want that. With the exception of the studs, unlike the Cities, you can't replace the lugs on the carbon sole. So once it's worn out, your shoe's done. So I guess it boils down to that question of if I was spending my own money, again, it's a lot of money, which would I buy or which would I recommend to a friend? Well, it'd probably be the Cities buy a whisker. No matter how refined or great that carbon salt felt on the s fires and it really did feel good, the fact that that heel cup started to wear out kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. They're so expensive and I'd just, I'd just be worried that I'd have those shoes for a year, riding them day in, day out, and they'd be wrecked by then. With the Cities, you can replace all the lugs on the sole and they should last for a long time. The fit might not be quite as refined as the S-Fires, but it's still pretty good and that's a price I'd be willing to pay for the extra durability. Mm -hmm.